You know, there's only one book in the Bible, meaning the Jewish Bible, 39 books, well, God's name is never mentioned. Never. You guessed it, it's the book of Esther. In that one book, God's name never appears explicitly. Why? Because God came to the children of Israel and was using a costume. He was hiding behind this. You know, Haman rose up to destroy the children of Israel. He was an evil man. And someone could attribute the good fortune of the Jewish people to just that, good fortune, serendipity. The Jews just got lucky. As it turned out, um, Achashverosh, he had his wife killed. He would not be the first king to kill an unwanted wife. I'm sure Esther was very beautiful. The Jews got lucky. Mordechai, as it turns out, was someone who just spoke many languages. There are people like that. And he just happened to be in the right place at the right time to overhear a plot, an assassination attempt on Nachashverosh. See, all those things could have happened. They could have occurred, and it was just one big coincidence. Achashverosh took a liking to Esther and decided to replace his former wife with a Jewish girl who happens to have a very close relative that overhears an assassination plot. And although our enemies came to destroy us, God destroyed those who plotted against the children of Israel. See, at every stage in the book of Esther, God is coming in the form of a costume. What does that mean? It means he's coming in the form of Mordechai and Esther and Vashti and Haman. All these players are there. And we could ascribe what happened at the end where Haman and all of his sons and all those who wanted to destroy the Jews... We could just say coincidence, coincidence, coincidence. And we could still do that today. Here I am in Jerusalem on Purim. How did this ever happen? Jews got lucky. There was a boat, we were, bad thing happened, this happened. You know, it's a very interesting topic. Listen very carefully. When the Messiah comes, what will we be studying? What books in the Bible will we be going through? Well, for example, when the Mashiach comes, the true Messiah, will we be studying the book of Isaiah? Think about that for a moment. I mean, the Messiah has come. Will we be going through the book of Isaiah, which talks about a future Messiah that will come? Or about how you need to get your act together so that the Messiah will come? Or how to trigger the Messiah's coming? So, of course, the book of Isaiah will be a, always be a holy book. But in essence, when Mashiach comes, we won't be studying it any longer. Because it's about the past. How about Jeremiah? We won't be studying that either. How about Ezekiel? It talks about a future Messianic temple. The book of Ezekiel tells us why the first time was destroyed. That means all of the Hebrew Bible, listen very carefully, with the exception, essentially, of the five books of Moses and the book of Esther, much of it will not be relevant any longer. It's not that it isn't holy. It's not like Micah will cease to be holy. It's just the Jews won't be studying Micah anymore because you finally did it. Arise and shine, for your light has come. The nations will go by your light. Kings, the sons of them that oppress you. All those prophecies, they're so uplifting in the Messianic age, it won't be relevant. But the book of Esther will be, always will be, because that's how this final redemption is occurring. See, God is hidden behind all these characters. Everything that you see here in Jerusalem, God is behind it. But we can, if we wanted to, we could say, it's just luck. 
we got lucky. Maybe the Jews are a little smart. We just got a little lucky at a little of the right time. And we can deny God and never penetrate the costume. We could just say, all I see is the costume and I can't see what's behind it all. See? And that's what Purim is about. That's why the book of Esther ends with the statement that this festival will go on forever. The Jews will never cease to celebrate this holiday. Purim will never cease. Why? Because in the Messianic age, God is revealing himself not through a parting of a sea, through 10 miraculous plagues, through mana, food coming from the heavens. No. God is coming in a costume. He's coming as characters that are this and this and that and Haman and Esther and Vashti and Mordecai, all these characters. And now it's up to you. Do you have what it takes to see through the costume? Did you do it? If you, if you can do that, you have found the God of Israel. That's why Purim is so holy. In fact, our sages tell us that Purim is so holy that it's a play on words that Yom Kippur is only Kippurim. It's a play on words, but it really works. The Yom Kippur, which is the holiest day of the year, is only Kippurim. It's only like Purim. Purim is so intriguing because the time that we really can fall in love with God is a Lord, I found you. I see you hiding behind the costumes. I recognize the characters and I know your hand is there. I trust in you. I pray to you. I bow before you. I kneel before you because I found you and I'm madly in love with you. Happy Purim. If you enjoyed this program, please like and subscribe. Adon יציר נברא לעת נעשה בחף צוקו אזי מלך, אזי מלך שמו נקרא ואחרי כפלות הכל לבדו ימלוך נורא והוא היה והוא עובר